but unfortunately, before you could fully clean, finish up your work there and depart, uh, Lord Fuckface showed up and raffle stomped all over your party again in an attempt to abduct Emove. Uh, but in the process, Cornelius intervened, uh, ragdolling the jester around like the joke that he is. Uh, but unfortunately getting his arm severed in the process and being abducted by the pair after Argith had a timely intervention and saved Lana from getting stabbed by what we now know is essentially an antimatter sword. Uh, you returned to the tower to try to figure out your next steps and learned that Cornelius's co-workers were surprisingly to at least a few of you uh, the enigmatic god known as Kas. They recommended that you take a little time to recuperate in the observatory, and then at some point the next day, you convene with all of your allies and gods so that you might discuss the next steps to deal with what is happening to Cornelius at the moment. So last session, for those of you that weren't here, we had a little bit of a brief role-playing. I say brief, but it went on for a few hours, where we talked to a few characters. That's brief for and, us. Yeah. We talked with characters back and forth for a bit. Most of it was um, just interesting discussions, but some important information did come up that... Uh, we can either say that your characters were there and I can fill you in now, or we can let the others uh, catch you up on after the fact. That is entirely your choice on which way you want to go. We learned that uh, Reese has an aunt. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Reese has a lot of things. Sure, we're going to immediately forget who his aunt is. You did. Yeah. Reese remembers though, but doesn't remember ever well, meeting her. <laughs> Reese, Reese, no, Reese remembers what Lana told him. Yes. Reese trusts Lana enough to not be crazy now. She <laughs> <That's cute. laughs> uh, and the other important thing we learned was whatever sword is made out of. Uh, they referred to it as void steel. Uh, it is essentially physical space occupied by the material that exists outside of the planes. Um, it occasionally overlaps the material plane and is mineable to an extent, but no mortal can physically shape the stuff. It is more or less antimatter because it just carves through any matter that it touches. That's like, it displaces objects it moves through because they don't know how the fuck to deal with that. <laughs> That's problematic. Uh, yes, it is. Um, it was mentioned that if you could get your hands on some of it and find somebody who could forge it, it would be a pretty strong asset, seeing as the only thing that you do know that is made out of it is very few of the divine artifacts. Uh, the ones that we know of offhand are Eber's sword... Uh, as well as Argoth's shield, uh, and a few other divine artifacts that are unaccounted for. Um, the only known mortals that use it in any way, shape, or form to any notable extent, other than random artifacts from other civilizations scattered about, uh, are the Black Legion, who commonly use it in their Black Blades. It gives them those unique properties that makes it really good to slap demons around with. It is still in a raw, unrefined state, but it is something. So if you could get uh, some of the reserves from them, you might find a way to refine it down the line. But, as we currently stand... Uh, does anybody have any shopping or discussions they would like to do before we move to... Did we get paid? The council. You did. One second. Yeah, because Lana's kind of a broke bitch after her weapon upgrades. Uh, 
Let me eat my food gummy vitamins and look up the table. Currently level eleven. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, you each earned th three hundred gold pieces. Oof. Mm. Fuck yeah. Matt. Yes. Why does it say? Okay, so it says I have nine hundred sixty-four gold pieces, but under total wealth, it says I have twelve twelve. That includes items. Yeah, like treasures and such. Mm hmm. That's calculated in? Yeah. Yes. Okay. But you can use convert the treasures. But all I have is my gold pieces and. I mean, my, my total pieces. wealth is 4710. I'm guessing it has to include uh, items that have a cost. Yeah. Where do I. Uh, well, it's probably including your clandestine cloak and other uh, equipment that actually has cost to it. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because mine says my total wealth is 8,000, and God knows he does not have that much. Where is all that coming from? It's because I have a bunch of stuff listed in his inventory and set to zero. Oh, I see. And po poisons. I see, I see. You said 300, Matt? Yep. <laughs> Alright. Does anybody want to do some shopping with their newfound wealth? We are. I mean, I always want to shop. I know. Yeah. Um. Let's take a look at those runes. You okay, Sam? I'm trying to figure something out. I'll ignore me for a minute. I was gonna steal one of the tabs of Foundry I already have open, but I need that still. Uh, Miku does not have any shopping that I can think of right now. I will pick up my Armor Potency plus two rune. Hell yeah. How much All does right. that cost? 1062. Oh, okay. Uh, basic armor plus two costs 900 from the previous step. Oh. So I just deduct 900? Yes. And that should increase your AC by one and give you a second rune slot. Just a flat 900? Yes. Are there any specific upgrades I can make? Or is it just weapon and armor? Make or buy? Buy? Question marks? Because I mean, like, there's the weapon upgrade and the armor upgrade. I wasn't sure if there was anything for, like, my. I don't know, instruments or anything? Instruments. 
Uh, remember that your weapon, your instruments upgrade alongside your weapon. So if you get your weapon to plus e two, yeah. How, how much is that? Nine hundred. Sure. <laughs> All right. It is now a plus two. Maze uh, repertoire is now plus two and striking. Plus two and striking? Yep. Uh, so it gives you plus two to hit and for performance checks, and you have an extra damage dice when attacking with it. That do is I for melee any... attacks. You do not add that to spells. Do I put anything in property rune first and second? Uh, only if you're buying property runes. No. Uh, so weapon potency plus two, striking rune striking? Yes. And then base damage is at 2d6? 1d6. 1d6. Where do the I add the... will automatically increase it. Okay. So everything's good, right? Yep. Apparently I can use disarm with my rapier. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And what does that do to my instrument? Does it do anything? Uh, it turns it into a plus two instrument. <laughs> <laughs> That gives me plus an extra plus one to my performance, I think. Hmm. Can I go ahead and put my Shadow Rune into my second slot? Uh, yes, if you have it. Cool. Then you can have somebody pop that in for you, either Mika or anybody with magical crafting, really. <laughs> Matt, how much is barding? Like, just plain barding. Uh... I can only find Barding of the Zephyr. And that's expensive. Uh, how big is your pet? Medium. Okay. Uh, what's her strength modifier? Plus three. Okay. Uh, she can have light barding without any penalties on it, and that costs ten gold. It gives her a plus one AC bonus and gives her a dex cap plus five. Okay. Oh, we never changed her sheet over. Oh, I don't right. know how to add that to her stuff. Right. Uh, hold on. Oh wait. Uh, we'll give you. Oh. oh call this. Oh. Okay. So you should have two Mayas now. Uh, you can copy the stats over to the new sheet. Are we also able to buy potions? Yes, you can buy potions if you want. Alternatively, you still get the... Um, you each get two points to get potions and trinkets and stuff at the start. Yes, but consider I can use those to buy ammo that's more expensive. Yeah, you can buy potions. <laughs> How many moderates would I be allowed to buy? Like, if I uh, wanted <clears throat> three of them, could I get three? Moderate potions, let's check. Yeah, the 50 gold ones. Uh, I'd let you buy three. Okay. How many points do we get for that kind of stuff? Two points each, but you can trade those points around. I'm putting mine in for moderate potions. Yep. Um... Yep, 
You can either get two moderates or a greater. It depends on if you'd rather have two smaller ones or... It's the same total HP, it's just... Do you want to wait until you're real low and drink a power chug, or do you have, have two normal chugs? I'll take one greater. I'll bite that. I could get... Um... Nico will just pick up one moderate potion, and then if someone else needs that po um, point, they can use it. Picking up a moderate and a potion of quickness, because that worked last time. Yeah, that free haste mm -hmm. is nice. Could I... Could I have Mika's? Him? Sure. What are you getting? I want more synesthesia arrows. God, Tomas is a gremlin. <laughs> Once more, what? Synesthesia arrows. Ah. Um. So if I take two, I'm gonna get two synesthesia arrows and the, another acid arrow arrow. Oh, uh, I was. So confused for a second, then I remembered that acid arrow is a spell. <laughs> <sighs> it's a spell that shoots out an arrow. Yep. Uh, you want to buy any upgrades or pick your free items, Wolf? Mmm. I think a moderate and a quickness potion. Swiftness. Oh, yeah. That is definitely a good combo. Yep. Uh, with one of her points, Lana's also going to pick up a quickness, but she's going to sit on her other point until it's uh, deployment time. That is fair. Okay. Alright. Anybody else need to buy yeah. anything or spend points? Okay, and does anybody need to have any discussions before we head to the fun meeting? Reese does need to catch Wolf and Mika up on uh, his new friend. Right, right. So you want to do that now, or do you want me to give the overcap? Eh, you can do an overview, that's fine. It's nothing super fun or important. So, um... Mika and Wolf eventually Toma eventually Reese flags you down uh, and gives you a little heads up that um, please don't murder Allegro if you find him around. He's friendly isn't the right word. There's mm -hmm. a truce. <laughs> so don't kill the bird. No, he's technically one of the souls that is inside my body right now so probably would be bad. All right. That makes as, that yeah, makes I know it's sense. weird. It makes as much sense as anything else. So sure. Yep. Yeah. About right. Yep. All right. All right. So now everybody's caught up. Any other fun? Uh, information we need to pass along between characters or between players and NPCs. Did Lennon Reeves have breakfast with the troop? Yeah. Yeah. That's an old friendly conversation. Are Are we about to go into like our quote unquote week of downtime? You're not getting a week of downtime. Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay. That was just my curiosity. Uh, Mika will catch uh Imove since they didn't get much of a chance to talk chance to talk yet. And mm -hmm. uh just kinda let her know that uh like <laughs> she, she she said you did good. <laughs> yep. So you have a brief conversation with Imove and she seems a bit shocked by that at first, but relieved to hear that um God words. Selwis 
is still doing fine in there. Well, as fine as you can be, mm -hmm. all things considered. Fine enough, and it's, I was pretty proud of you, so. That's about all Mika had. Yep. Well, she seems to be at least a little more relieved heading into the next few hours leading up to the meeting. Is this still the same night we've gotten back? Like, uh, this is the meeting is going to be the following day. Okay. This is after everybody's had a chance to recover, pass themselves up. Okay, yeah. Power nap, get some food in them. Let's try and reset my HP and things. Yep. Everybody, feel free to reset your HP. I will start um, revealing the characters around. Oops, wrong button. The observatory. The do I want boots of bounding or do I want slippers of spider climbing? You plan on jumping? Oh, right. I was going to buy those uh, bracers. Fuck, I forgot about that. Uh, which bracers? The athletic one? I forgot they're called. Oh. Less jumping and more for the five foot uh, item bonus to speed. Ah. Where are the. No. But slippers of spire climbing means I can literally just walk up a wall. That terrifies That's... me. <laughs> it seems. It seems. I don't like this. Prohibitively useful. <laughs> Oh, armbands of athleticism. Peace. So how much can... money you got? I have 800. That's good, because the level 9 version costs 645. Mm -hmm. 675, is that what you said? 645. Okay. Goodbye money. Goodbye money. Hello armbands, though. Hello armbands, indeed. <laughs> See. The climbing only lasts for a minute, though. So you better fucking... Better shuffle across up that wall as fast as you can in slippers without falling out of them and dying. Basically. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't completely replace wall run. Yeah. No. Um, I'm tempted to get the boots abounding just for the extra speed. Speed is always good. Yeah, he'll put me at 35. Uh, I think I'll do that for now. Alright. So, minus 340. Alright, I have given you your armbands and applied them to you. Thank you. Uh, you now have a plus 24 in athletics. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh... Yay, thirty five. 35 feet of movement. We... Alright. Anything else from anybody before we get the fun conversation started? I imagine during their morning jog, Reebs keeps up marginally better, and Lana's like, wow, it's really paying off! It is like, it's, it is like it, it, it's the shoes. Now I was like, no, no, you're doing well. No, Lana, literally, it's the shoes. <laughs> the only thing I've got, Lana, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, let's shift the music around a bit. It started.
That's not the right one. <laughs> it's like, this is intense for a meeting. <laughs> Ooh. Hmm. All right. I like this. This sounds vaguely familiar. This sounds so familiar. Oh, yep. Good old Toby Fox music. Dude, Toby so, Fox. Yeah. Man's a ball, or I love him. His 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 career is basically like, oops, all dangers. <laughs> so, as you guys head upstairs uh, to reconvene with Koss. Um, you see a number of familiar faces scattered about the room, and a few unfamiliar. Uh, it looks like most of the combatant uh, members of the Hands of the Mother are around, um, as well as Emove, Lynn, Hastings, Nara, Feck, some random card that you don't quite remember, but you remember Lana warning you that that's probably the case and that they're important. The members of the Bressian Intelligence, Zara, and the man that addressed you yesterday as Koss, as well as two other figures, stand on the far side of the room. Lana, I finally have a token for her. Say hello Yay. to Argus. <laughs> Yay! Uh, finding tokens is fun. <laughs> Lana. <sighs> yeah? What's up? Who's the guard? That... That's our gift. Oh. You've, you've met before, but you don't remember. It's a whole thing. Don't worry about it. So... But the last of you arrived. The older gentleman at the center of the three odd figures at the far side of the room looks over you all. And his gaze mainly stops on you, Six. I trust you've rested up. Well enough. Um... Uh, rested as we're going to be after after yesterday. Rested enough to keep fighting. I'm pretty sure that's what you're asking, right? Nods his head at that. As he may have alluded to in the past, Cornelius is one of us. We, uh, and he gestures to the men on either side of him, are representatives of Koss. Our actions here at the moment are a bit limited. Under most circumstances, we shouldn't even be out this far, but Nara has made special preparations so that we might join you here, at least in appearance. It likely wasn't the first time, but... The room you passed through yesterday is a bit of a special circumstance, and there are certain rules that we must abide by. Cornelius's workshop, and by extension our workshop, is not some sort of magical room that any old mage might encounter. What you were walking through was our domain. He so lovingly liked to refer to it as cheating, but in essence... The other members of Koss are stuck outside of this world. It's the only way we retain enough power to be of relevance. And wow. Cornelius has our current... most recent member was the one we chose to continue acting on our stead here so long as the god falls in place.
but considering recent events, that has complicated things, and thus we must discuss how best to proceed. As you might have noticed, he had a bit of a unique talent that is of grave concern that he has let it drop into Eber and Ethos's hands. Not sure let is the right word, but... He was disarmed of it. Uh, Reeves! <laughs> that was a good one. No, it wasn't a good one! It was a bad one! It was a very, very bad one! That was yesterday! What's wrong with you? Too soon. Uh, uh, how far does that pro how power of his extend, then, that it's going to be such a problem? Isn't the radius in it, but the fact that there are certain individuals that have an ability to utilize it much better than someone of our lowly status could. Wow, even this guy's got the whole, like, talking himself down while being really cool thing going. It's uh, just kind of like a... Fa thing? Cost functions not because we individually have large reserves of mana or ether or anything like the others rely upon, but because we are a collaboration of similarly minded individuals. So, question. Yes. Um... Do you all share the same domain, as in what you preside over, or are you all have your own particular ones? Within our domain, we each have our own preferences, but Cornelius, as the acting member of Kos, taps into each of them ever so slightly. And unfortunately, that means he has a tether to all of them. Including the one I'm most concerned about. Not of knowledge, but of time. Oh, did the thing with the thing. The, the little stopwatch, right? Yeah. Yes. As I said, we're not exactly individually capable of performing great feats. Thus, he utilized his extensive knowledge that he gained as a member to utilize a focus. Something that allowed him to temporarily draw in massive amounts of ether from the surrounding and allow him to tap into an otherwise very difficult to maintain the mortal realm domain. Unfortunately, it appears there are several other individuals here, primarily the Triumvirate, and potentially also one who has a great number of their blessings, such as Eber, might be able to more freely utilize that, and I don't think I need to explain how problematic that could be for everyone involved. No explanation necessary. Not even one. So I've got a question. Yes. So these hats we always talk about, those are kind of like your domains, right? Like the god hats and shit? <sighs> yes, one of Cornelius's colorful explanations, I suppose. Yeah, so... When Cornelius did the thing with the stopwatch, ever made this comment of, so that's where it is. And... There was like this whole conversation, I don't fucking remember who told us anyways, but about how it was, it was Kiral who told them about the, um, the god wars, right? Yeah, the god, uh, the gods murdering each other or the gods, get, gods getting pissy at Kiral? The gods murdering each other. Uh, that was, uh, the guy you hate. Yeah, the wanderer oh. told us about the, the fighting. <sighs> okay, and so yeah, so fuckface McGee number two. <laughs> He told us about all these fucking gods killing each other over domains, right? To get their powers. So, ever made this comment of, so that's where it is. He wasn't talking about the fucking stopwatch, was he? He was talking about no. the hat. 
He was talking about the domain of time, which we had gone to great measures to obscure from the others while we are depl while we are down here. But uh, cool. So fuckface like E number one knows where it is now. Yes, and he has a direct connection to it enough that one of the triumvirate might attempt to pull it from us. Why didn't he just kill him there and then and take it? Why did he have to bring him with us? He was looking. He wanted a move initially. He didn't even look at Cornelius till Cornelius took his place. Because, as high and mighty as ever seems, he's nothing but a lapdog. Well, I. But... A lapdog with a really, really big tooth. It's also probably mm. too stupid to have thought about killing him right then and there. The process of extracting one domain isn't something that can be easily done from a corpse, especially from ours. As foolish as he is, he probably brought Cornelius back to make sure that either he or one of his companions who's more skilled in the art had the time and means to properly extract the domain into a new host. And he can do that without having all of you. Correct. That's unfortunate. Yes. A unfortunate side effect of the way we chose to manifest. But considering all of us had already survived one god war, we don't exactly want to release a dozen or so rather ill-equipped gods onto the earth just to be slaughtered by those who get... Just the slightest bit of hunger for something more. Huh. Our agreement is not a common one. I have another question. Yes. So I don't know if this is a general goal of the group. But I very much want Ever dead, right? What if I don't want his hat? After I kill him, I mean. That's probably for the best. The process of absorbing a domain is very arduous. So does it just, like, fuck off in the wind? It'll disperse either for another god to collect if they're prepared for Whoa. it, or back into the population until it Ta manifests enough in a single host. Tomas! Give it to another- what? Wait, remember- Do you remember the previous champion of Rouse that ended the, the last- the war? Yeah. I mean, he didn't... Like, they, they got his hat back and he died. It takes a bit, but... I just want to make sure that after I literally murder this motherfucker, I don't get his hat. Sounds like you didn't No, a it's not something you can pick up by accident. Cool. The, uh, very... The very premise of even considering that's a little pr presumptuous. Which, a bit. um... Which leads me to this point. Um, how are we going to save our friend when he's been, um, when, he, when he's been? So, uh, uh, Sorry, was there another question after? Did somebody else chime in with a secondary question after? How are we going to save him? My brain fried for a second. No, I don't think so. Okay. That is why we have called you all here to discuss that matter. I have been informed that your companion, and he looks over in the direction of the guard, has a means of holding Eber at bay at least. Our option, we likely won't have the means to dispose of Eber permanently, but if we can hold him at bay long enough to perform a recovery, that should be enough for the time being. This tower thus far has served as an operational base to keep those so inclined away from the eyes of Eber and his men. I imagine it should be able to keep doing so safely, at least for the foreseeable future. So we go in, Argus holds Eber at bay while we grab Cornelius and get him out of there, and then we all run for the hills? <sighs> And Hastings cuts in at that. If only it was that simple, lass. 
Nah, you want to show him. And with a couple of gestures, the globes begin spinning uh, and shifting to an image of uh, the known continents before zooming in towards an all too familiar city of Veru. Oh no. Oh, not there again. Unfortunately, <sighs> yes. It seems that's where Eber has set up his base of operations. It's always Veru. Yep. Luckily for us, after all of your efforts, most of the disturbances that are keeping me from getting clear images have dissolved. As far as we can tell, Eber and Cornelius are currently within the city walls. But based on the readings, we suspect there are at least several others there. It's likely Ethos's allies have all convened to make sure the process goes smoothly. They're doing their own meeting then. So that's creepy clown dude for one. Yeah, Samove was telling me about him briefly. Do you have any other information you can give me? He doesn't match up with any of our known records. Um, we bumped into him briefly in the, uh, what was it called? The the woods? The, uh, the labyrinth. The labyrinth, the the labyrinth, labyrinth? woods, yeah. We, we bumped into him for like a second there, but he ran away before I could really get a good look at him. I see. Any insight into what his domains might potentially be? Any sort of adverse effects you might have noticed in his presence? <laughs> he... Really creepy one, actually, yeah. Yeah, he, um... Kind of... Dropped in? And then... Well, everyone kind of gets this real creepy smiling look on their face while they're crying. I, I actually got a little bit t misty eyed looking at him back in the labyrinth. <clears throat> but, uh. It, it, yeah, smiles and tears. You see uh, Nara's eyes go wide for a moment before she rests her head in her hand and takes a long draw from her pipe. Uh. <sighs> Oh, it sounds like it's a friend of yours, Nara. Somebody you like a lot, huh? Mm -hmm. Not a friend, just something very concerning. Oh no, a big surprise. Yeah, that's nothing new. It sounds like they have dominion over emotions. Oh! That's, a, that's something you can have domain over. Yes, in fact, you already met somebody who originally had domain over them. What? Brianna. Oh. What? Oh. Did Brianna lose a hat? Uh, when he did that to her back in Peru, Burp in the first place, he must have somehow? <laughs> Can they do that to a member of the Triumvirate? Can they do that? If Ethos was directly involved, it's possible. I don't know any records of it happening on hand, considering most of the Triumvirate tend to stay out of these matters, but... That's gravely concerning if Ethos has gone to that extent. Uh -huh. He also... Didn't he do something kind of weird when we tried to... ping him? Like, ever <clears throat> wasn't... Like he was not there and then he was there? A little bit... fuzzy on what happened, but... That was, uh, that was one of Argus' domains. Hmm. Yeah, because the clown was under Eber's protection, so... Mm -hmm. So that. Um, I don't know what the clown's plan was, but if its purpose is just to serve as a teleportation anchor for Eber, it does a pretty good job of that. Yeah. Wherever he was coming from, Cornelius managed to hold him off for a second using the stopwatch. Then I alchemized all the air around him into alchemist fire, but it didn't seem to do much to put him down long term. I don't know what he's made of, but he's definitely not immortal anymore. And what was he doing in the labyrinth? 
Okay, Maybe keeping tab. That I'd like to know. Maybe keeping tabs on us. Fortunately, the static holds back through time too, so we can't track his movements too well. But something to keep in mind to investigate later, I suppose. You can't track him directly with the static, but can you track around him? Like you can't go in the hole, but you can track where the hole's been. Potentially, we might be able to find gaps in his movement, predict where he is, and see if we can catch him in areas and moments when the static is weakened, but that'll take considerable time that we do not currently have at the moment. I've actually got a question for you, Amove. Um, yeah? They wanted you in the first place, it looked like. What do you have other than lighting things on fire that would be so handy to... I mean, not that lighting shit on fire is not useful, but that doesn't seem real big for the overall end the demon's goal ever seems to have. Yeah, that's what I can't really figure out. I have domain over innovation, crafting, and toil. That's really about it. Um, that last one? What? I don't... What, what does that even mean? Well, toil, working. I mean, that's why Cindergate. That's why well, Selwys is one of the twin gods of Cindergate, because he put in well, the work. Well, what's it let you do, though? It. Does it's, it let it's you, like, that does that it, one just seems a little weird to me, that's all. Does it let you work tirelessly? A bit. It inspires you to keep pushing forward with things. Oh. That seems like something they could use, right? Yeah, the, the, their silver. I suspect that's the case of why they are originally looking for her, yes. She is one of the younger gods, so I don't suspect she knows. But there's a reason why they might be going after it. An army that never tires? Amongst other things. We've been working with Nara and Cornelius to investigate a few things on our end. And we have reason to believe that all of the processes they're going through right now, the ultimatum, the... Uh, what's the term for it? The... The conscription of civilians into their order. Wait, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, could you repeat that real quick? I, I kind of glossed over it. The fact that they're going out of their way to offer these people ultimatums and conscript them into the order before fully indoctrinating them at sil into the Silver Order. If their means are just to repel the demons, as they suggest, why do you think they would go through all that effort? Uh, I'm, I'm not exactly familiar with the needs to repel the demons, so I didn't realize that was overkill. Ethos and his lot seem to want the Silver Order to be the means by which they repel the demons that are starting to resurge. Oh. But, there's a key reason why they're going through all these extra efforts that haven't been made exactly obvious. And after a bit of consideration, I believe we understand why. Only a few of the older gods might be aware of it. But when the Triumvirate created the mortal races, one of the first things they did was give them free will and divide up the means to control it above into dozens of subdomains, so that any one god might not completely influence them by any means. We have reason to believe that the process they're going through now is simply a workaround because they lack the means to conscript people directly into the Silver Order and empower them. So basically what you're saying is they want all a free will in their hands so that they can just put people in the Order? Am yes, I, am I, don't, I don't know to what end beyond that, but that seems to be what they're going for considering the disappearances we've had. 
Reeves, Reeves is grinding his teeth at this moment. Yeah, same. Well, if I didn't want to stop him before, that's the kind of thing I can't just stand up, stand aside and let happen. I imagine not. Luckily, as a difficult as difficult of a position as Cornelius has put us in, he at least managed to halt their effort for the time being and retrieving a Moves piece of that. But we have reason to believe they've already attempted or have succeeded in grabbing some of the others. No, out of curiosity, of the schools you lost, was Enchantment one of them? She shakes her head for a moment. Luckily, no. That was one of the ones I stored in deep. If we gave them a few more months, they might have gotten to it, but... It looks like my protege's... Preferences got the better of him. He didn't focus his efforts in it nearly enough, and tried to pull away necromancy first. We can thank him for being predictable, at least this time. He nods at that. And if our unassuming friend here is truly Argeth, it's not surprising that they would have taken her domains as well, considering that amongst them she contained duty. What left do you have to you, considering you're still here? I imagine you have at least one domain, even if it's weakened. She nods her head at that. As far as I can tell, I only have Wormkin directly under my control anymore. And only the half that was gifted to me and not to you, Matt. I see. Considering Ever was his inheritor, I imagine they already have Rouse's ambition. What about the Wandering dude? The one uh, who seems to always pop up when we take out a sin and answer questions. He said he's forgotten too. Yes, Tomas Fuckface McGee number two. Thanks, Rico. You're welcome. Did he identify himself to you at all? No. He said he was the god of lost knowledge? I think that sounds about right, yeah? Yeah. He seems concerned at that. Is he one of yours? No, which is concerning. He didn't seem hostile to us. He just kind of seemed like he was... Like he was just kind of watching to see how things would play out. And then he said we might not see him again, since, theoretically, Greed was the last one. The older man turns to uh, the man at his right. <sighs> Do you have any records of him? Just shakes his head. No, I believe Cornelius passed it along a bit earlier for me to look into, but I have no records of any god of lost knowledge, at least none that don't line up with one of our records directly. And there doesn't seem to be an inconsistency with our roster. Maybe it got lost. <laughs> ah, you would think that, but there are certain intricacies to being stripped from the records. Part of the validation process for your friend here to even be involved was for me to track down inconsistency in the locations she claims to have been in. It seems somebody was removed. And if it was Argeth, that would line up with some of the locations she was claimed to have been before things went south. Your friend doesn't seem to have any matching records, though, which is of concern. It probably oh. hasn't been brought up, but... Argeth's condition, and if you say the other man matches a similar fate... That effect more or less backpacks off our domain. An override the triumvirate can use to get rid of those that have committed grave offenses. Even if only temporarily as a form of punishment, so they might rethink their ways. 
can it be reversed? In time and in theory, yes, it has been before. But that would mean tracking down who did it and actually getting them to agree to the process. I don't know what conditions they set to return Argith back to her previous state. But the list of culprits is probably down to just three. Considering one of them is our nemesis and the other one is unaccounted for. And the older man chimes in and likely not responsible. He's never been known to use it. Then our so most likely culprits are either Ethos or Brianna, with one weighing a bit more heavily than the other. And do they got to agree to it, or can we just handle that after the fact? You mean, do they have to reach a decision as a triumvirate to enact that decision, or agree to it to reverse the process the, the latter it's easiest if we get them to agree to reverse the process but in theory if we can get any one of the other triumvirate on our side on the matter it could be undone with enough effort well we're not on speaking terms with two of them can I voice a very very odd thought what, can can one of the Triumvirate do it to another member of the Triumvirate? We know they can take domains from one. We saw it happen. Could Ethos have done it to Xyces? It would be unaccounted for, but... Potentially. Unfortunately, without any of them at our disposal, it's not exactly the easiest thing to confirm. I doubt it matters, but I have a fragment of Brianna. Interesting. If it's only a small shard of her, I don't imagine she has enough power to reverse it, but... We could at least confirm with her if she was involved in the matter. Are you able to contact her at will? Did you I guess respond? We... No, I, I didn't hear part of it. It cut out. Oh, he asked if you were able to um, reach out to her at will. Uh, I don't know. I haven't tried. <sighs> well, if you're able to figure it out, that would at least solve potentially two mysteries. See if she was involved in Argith, our mystery man. And ask if... They are able to enact that punishment on each other. At least the next time you see her, if you're not able to get in touch now. Um, another thought. The whole yes. theoretical the reason this best started was the demons came back, eh? That's what... That is, that is certainly a triggering effect in all of these events, yes. So... And Brianna and Ethos had different opinions on how to handle it. So... Do we have any idea how to stop it? Because if we stop it, then Ethos doesn't need any of his stuff anymore. Yes, that's what we've been pushing towards as best as we can. Based on the notes that Brianna left for us, through various means, we've already completed the first step in the process by getting rid of the six anchors. That means the demon host won't have many options left to hide, and sooner or later he'll have to force an appearance himself. At which point, though it will be quite the struggle, we'll have to banish him back to the Abyss. 
without the anchors to keep him here any longer. He won't be able to uh, cheat death like he did last time with Rouse. With that expunged, the others that he brought along with him won't have anything to power their existence here. Demon and devil kind lack the means to exist within the mortal plane without an external source of power, which the demon host is currently providing to them. Guess that's why he's called the host. Indeed. And that is still the condition for our godfather end. So once he has been dispelled, we can begin the process of reascending to the heavens and leaving the mortal realms back to relative normalcy, all things considered. Is it? Don't know. This might be something to discuss. I'll discuss later about theories, but I guess getting trying to get Cornelius back is going to be the main thing we've got to do before we can theorize on that. And right. that means going into Veru, where there's at least a dozen or so gods waiting to meet us. Based off the numbers that we have and who is missing, I suspect anywhere from... <sighs> A quarter to a half dozen. Oh goody. That's a lot of gods. Yes, well we've already confirmed two of them. Eber and the Jester that we don't seem to have a name for quite yet. And Nara times in, and we know my protege will be amongst their number. Okay, we have a god of war, we have a clown, and we have a uh, god of magic. So, yes. plan? <laughs> well, luckily for you, you have a god of protection, another god of magic, and several others. Luckily, we have a relatively good idea of what they're capable of, having been around long enough. It's just a matter of preparing for all other potentials. So let's go over what we know thus far to make sure we limit the surprises as much as possible. Despite his best efforts, I don't imagine Ethos would have been able to convince Brianna to turn against us, and he doesn't have the power to force another member of the Triumvirate to such action. I imagine it's keeping most of him just to keep her in her current state of at bay, so she can't come back and assist us. Still, there is the possibility of him arriving, which would be problematic, but as I said, most of his power should be kept in reserve for the time being. I wouldn't engage him directly, but he shouldn't be able to wipe out any of us, as long as we make certain precautions. Um. <sighs> Who else is unaccounted for currently? Reindrick? Uh, technically Nixie, right, Reebs? Does she count? Um, I'd be very surprised if she was in league with Heber. Right, Lynn? Yeah. If anything, given what Koss has been saying, I don't imagine that she'll be too on terms with them. If you thought she was mad at you guys, I, I don't think there are words to properly describe the emotion she has for... Ethos in his lot. Yeah, she's the other half of the inheritor. Of... Leard. So I can imagine they're trying to track her down, but considering how recently we've seen her, she seems to be holding her own for the time being at least. Quite considerable for a newer member. Sorry. A newer member. <sighs> we have those of us in attendance. I don't know if Sawice didn't mention much of it, but uh, I don't suppose anyone's gotten hold of Reindrick. The others nod their head a bit. 
MOV says, No, I've been stuck in Cindergate ever since Selwes handed everything over to me, so I haven't been able to try to get in touch with him. Nara pop, pops in. Me and Cornelius have been looking into a bit as well. As far as we can tell, he was last in the Dwarven lands somewhere, but nobody's been able to get in contact with him. Uh, Lynn's eyes go a bit wide at that for a moment and say, Well, I don't think I've ever run into him before, but... Just by chance, mind running his description by me? Yes, he has the proportions of a dwarf, but he's roughly the size of... Oh, let's say about an orc, maybe a little taller. He's a mountain of a dwarf and has the composition... Has the um, complexion to match. Most of his features seem almost as if he's carved out of stone, and his skin itself is as hard as marble. Oh, well, I think he's accounted for then. Huh? That doesn't sound good. Oh, right, I. Brianna never got the chance to pass that along then. Right. Um. So I took a bit of a visit over to. Ooh, over to the Dwarven capital a bit ago to try to see if I could find where the Crownless Kings were, and. Yeah. Looks like Eber had paid them a visit already, and. I thought it was a statue at the time, but. At the head of the room was a. Very headless, large dwarven statue. Oh, fuck. Well, so much for forging. So, so much for forging uh, Void Steel, then. That would explain his lack of contact and wherever. Why ever would have gone out of his way to deal with them. And he probably took some of his powers for some of the Silver Army stuff, I. Eh? Would account I for imagine why. that would explain how they are able to reproduce that much armor that quickly. Even if they did tap into Argeth a bit to get some of her armor, I imagine they would have had a great deal replicating it using mortal smithies. Some of them have newer stuff too. They ran into them in uh, Kirala's lands. Yes. The leader is a bit concerning to me. The taskmaster of the Silver Order. It's quite possible they've risen him to divinity a bit as well. Though who knows what domain they've bothered to put into him. And if I recall correctly, she looks over towards the Bressian dignitaries. As I understand it, there was a brief renewal in contact with the Dwarven lands shortly before things went south in Brescia. Uh, yes. Our Dwarven ambassadors claimed he had reconnected with them at the Dwarven capital. And was relaying our messages back and forth, but considering what I just heard, that is very likely a ploy, and one that probably has a great deal more concerns than we would have expected. And, with the shift of her hand, this is the man that was the Dwarven Ambassador, correct? They nod. It's quite possible he is either the one they chose to replace Ryan Drake, or one who serves him directly. It's hard to tell which, since we haven't run into him directly at this point, but we should keep an eye out for him. Ryan Drake had a considerable number of domains under his command, which would be very unfortunate for us to run into. <sighs> they think for a moment. Out of all the lost domains, assuming they haven't managed to track down any of the other mortal deities, I imagine the courts are still fully in session. In fact, Nods has had that and says, 
Oh, yes, they've been quite hesitant to try and approach us directly, especially considering how much the Winter Queen and the Summer Prince adore their presence. For the time being, we're all quite fine where we are, but things are a bit out of, a hand, out of my hand for the time being over there with the way things work. <sighs> and considering our recent run-in with Tiamat, we're lucky that they didn't manage to siphon any of her domains process. The last thing we needed was any of them picking up any dominion over the soul or nightmares. So she's not on my side. At least not yet. No, if anything. She's still a rogue agent as she always was and quite a powerful one at that. If we had the means to dispose of her already, we would have, and considering we're scattered about even more than when we had control over the heavens, I imagine she'll be relatively safe for the time being. For better or for worse. Oh, good. <sighs> so with all likelihood, these are our six most likely candidates to encounter there based on the knowledge we have Eber has dominion over all of Rouse as well as several portions of Argus former's domain so he's going to be highly specialized in offense and defense much to the fact I don't recommend anybody other than Argus engage with him directly if at all possible your main objective if he does try to engage with you should be to flee as quickly as possible Given that he still wields Rouse's sword, no means that you have to defend yourself will likely be enough at this time. <sighs> My former protege and the one who so eagerly tried to usurp my hat has control over several of the schools of magic that he stripped from me, namely necromancy and evocation, as well as portions of illusion, abjuration, and summoning, which would be tedious, but nothing I can't keep under control while I'm with you. He's nothing if not a predictable old dodger. Out of curiosity, what was the one that you said you buried deep down again? Enchantment, the one to directly influence somebody's mind. Oh. Oh. Okay. That's good. I took a great many precautions against idiots like him, and one of them was making sure the most dangerous things were bundled as deep as I could under protective spells. It's like the problem hat. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, okay. Right. I love Nara. <laughs> hmm. Based on what you've... Sorry, go ahead. Who wants to use his hat just to piss him off now? Yeah. Based on what you've told us of the Jester, he likely has domain over at least a motion and has some means to survive otherwise fatal attacks. Superhuman durability isn't especially uncommon, but I wouldn't have expected it given his domain that we're currently aware of. I'd be cautious of him. Dominion over emotions means he'll have means to shut down anybody without considerable willpower quite easily. Even if he only has mortal speed and strength on top of that, it would make him considerably difficult to engage on any, me on any measure. From what we've observed, the Taskmaster seems to have direct control all over all the Silver Orders and Silver Order Knights, and they seem to be enhanced in his presence. Outside of that, we have no idea who they are or what domains they might have direct control of, though. Considering what has been going on, they might be funneling several of the obedience-based and free will-based domains into him to consolidate them and strength in their powers of overlapping. Athos, amongst a great many things, controls creation, light, and the sun, though I imagine the later two will be the ones we're most concerned with. 
seeing as creation, at least in short term, was divided out to most of the others. Defense against that will have to fall on us. Uh, he has a great many means to... We'll call it... Offensively redirect light at people in very inconvenient ways that most mortals will have no means to protect against. If he arrives, our best bet is to complete things even quicker than before, as likely as that is. As for our dwarven friend there, if him... If he is the inheritor of Ryan Drake, or the true inheritor of Ryan Drake shows up if he is not, that could be very problematic for us, considering he has direct control over smithing. And outside of anything of a divine artifact level, he might be able to smith them within mere moments, creating objects out of thin air as far as mortals are concerned. He's probably with the bulk of the army, though, yeah? Since he's the one kitten them out? Perhaps. Depends on how quickly they're training up soldiers at the moment, and how dire the current circumstance is for Ethos and the others. Leo, please. Most of his other domains would be secondary. We shouldn't have to worry about cities or wealth causing us too much issues as they don't have any direct combat applications, but... As for his personal prowess, that remains to be seen. Okay. As for our forces, as Koss mentioned, the fact that they're able to converse with us now is a bit of an extenuating circumstance. They're essentially here via illusion. They aren't allowed to leave their domain. Only Cornelius. Those of us that will be accompanying you will be myself, if anything, to make sure that we have a means to escape quickly and to counteract the Archmagus so he doesn't try to do anything to heinous with what he's stolen from me. Argith will be our shield against Eber, should he try to strike us down, as I imagine he will, considering how... One note, his talents lie in how short fuse he has. Hastings will be sitting in reserve on his ship, in case we need to make a secondary escape another way. He won't be able to provide us direct support, but if we're able to make it to him should things go sour, they won't be able to follow us. I'm nothing else if not difficult to track, dear. I know you are. Lynn will be our means to get into the city, and will be offering what combat support she can manage. Her specialties lie in freedom, so she might be able to assist us in getting out of some of their other protective measures should any arrive, and shielding you to an extent from the Jester. Amove will be our offensive support while the others are distracted doing what she can to protect you from Ryan Drake's inheritor should he arrive, or Ethos should he descend as well. Unfortunately, my dears, as wonderful as it would be for me to assist you as well, Fex says, I am unfortunately at my weakest as it currently stands in the middle of spring, so I would be a liability, if anything, if I tagged along. I'll be cheering for you for what it counts, but that doesn't matter for much. I'll tell you what, if you all come back alive, I'll throw you a celebration. Breeze gives a salute. <laughs> Can I have another scrap? Can I have another scrap, Fallon? I'll tell Reese you what, if nobody, no. comes back, if nobody comes back dead, you can have all the scrap you can eat. Huzzah! 
I clarify all you can eat, all that not all you want to eat, because nobody should want to eat scrap, and I have no idea why you still insist on it. Well, well the stuff you make is really good. I'll take that as a compliment. I don't suppose you could stand and chuck arrows from far away. <laughs> Seemed to work. Oh, that's not my forte. Oh. Reese has seen my preferred methods, but no, unfortunately, no. outside of my estate, my ability to do so is very limited at the moment. Yeah, the, the, the arrow thing is Phelan, and he's probably still a little bit preoccupied. <sighs> yes, Phelan and Kiral are a bit occupied at the moment. Without heavy silver order presence in their homelands, they're occupied keeping the demonic forces there at bay to the best of their ability. So they unfortunately will not be able to assist us at the moment. Hmm. The Triumvirate are all otherwise indisposed, and the rest of the gods that we are aware of are likely going to be there to oppose us, if anything. Save for Nixie and... Tiamat, but... I'd much prefer they stay out of this one for the time being. I would also prefer if Nixie stayed out of this for the time being. Yes. But Reeves, don't you remember her, friend? Lynn, that's out of sigh. <laughs> <laughs> Reeves just sort of looks up at you, just, just sort of cants his head, and just gives you a dirty look. <laughs> the last is just grinning like a little shit. I have access to your ankles. <laughs> Please don't kill each other until after this. Yeah, if you kill me now, the bat just completely negates the scrap fountain, man. Yes, I did say you all have to come back alive, and that was from the moment I made the offer, so keep that in mind. Can't learn, can't learn anything with a god seal, can't bite my friends' ankles, this sucks. Ah, uh, we all have our burdens to bear. Ah. <sighs> Well, and it shifts attention back to the speaker of Kos. Based on what we've gone over with Nara thus far, uh, it seems that the current plan is that we'll be deploying the observatory outside of their defenses in a gap that we've identified. We imagine they'll have defensive measures set up around the city, so unfortunately... We doubt we have means to deploy directly in it. But there are gaps left from the demonic incursion that even Ethos and his men have not been able to patch completely. Yes, we've gone over all the records extensively from anything written during the incursion itself. It looks like they've passed most of the obvious ones, but there were a few subterranean breaches that they don't seem to have identified yet that we might be able to exploit. They emerge pretty quickly into the city, so we don't have to worry about staying underground too long in the tunnels, unfortunately. It won't exactly be an option that you can go the entirety of the way undetected. But it should get you past the outermost walls at the very least, and considering your escort, I imagine unless they have gotten considerably stronger since we last saw them, you should be able to blow through most of their defenses before the opposing deities can rally to their defense. We suspect their defenses are holed around the inner sanctum where you had your unfortunate encounter with Eber before. Hopefully we won't have to re-enter it, depending on where they've set up most of their barracks and are keeping Cornelius and Nicandros. But we have to be ready for that possibility. Luckily, we have a number of combatants ready outside of us, so we'll likely be breaking everyone up into teams to have a two-pronged assault. Considering you six work well together, we'll have you handle one end of the offensive. And most of your allies have offered to assist on a secondary prong 
to help divert their resources. We'll be accompanying you, splitting our resources accordingly between the two groups, and converging at the estate at the uppermost part of the city once we're ready. Ideally, we'll overwhelm their defenses and grab Cornelius and Nicandros before they have time to rally their defenses. But should the other gods rise in opposition, it'll be our jobs to hold them at bay while the rest of you coordinate and work on retrieving those two and getting them back to a perimeter so we might escape altogether. To avoid being traced back, we'll be teleporting several locations around before returning to the observatory. But that should be safe enough once we've managed to break off engagement from them ourselves. I won't say it's not going to be risky, but we've gone a lot farther than expected without this kind of confrontation. Considering what they're after at the moment, it's only a matter of it was only a matter of time until we had to start confronting them directly. <sighs> Any luck? Maybe we can. If we do run into one of them, we can subdue them and take their hats. At least or get rid of them so they can't use them. Yes. If we have the means to abduct one of them safely, we'll look into it, but our, ser our primary concern is if we can catch one of them off guard is removing them from the equation. It'll be a great deal of effort for them to recollect their domains and find a new host for them if they're not already on hand to gather what's left of them. This is going to be a considerably risky endeavor, so if you have any concerns, let's state them now. Nothing I can... at least I can think of as concrete. Uh, Either you've grown considerably more courageous, or you've grown numb to the danger you're in. Luckily, that either one. one of them yeah. works out well in this situation. I think the latter one might be more accurate at this point. I would like uh, to think I'm a little more brave, personally. Are you able to generate like a map or something of the city? I would like to actually know what our potential access points and exit points are. Yes, let me show you that now, and then we'll cut to that section at the start of the next uh, session. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did not have time to gather, gather a fucking map this week. So we'll start next set. We'll not, we're not cutting off here just yet. We'll start <laughs> yeah. next session with an overview of the city map, um, cool. and then the routes that each team will take. Just for clarification, you guys will be handled together, so we're not doing odd and off weeks still. The rest of the Hands of the Mothers slash Redeemers will be in Group B and taking a secondary route. Yeah, no, I, I, I was more like, Reeves is going to ask for a map. I, I didn't expect you to have a map ready. Yep. All right. So after looking that all over. All right. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Nope. Uh, that thorough explanation uh, uh, assuaged my concerns. I do what I can. I don't have anything, but I, don't know. I can. I suspect we might be able to. Possibly, each of us kind of motioning to the group as a whole might be able to ask some of our passengers and see if uh, they have any thoughts or ideas on their end. Yeah, I'm, oh. I'm trying to get a hold of Silkus right now. He probably knows something. 
For the most part, Sarah is just kind of long for the ride, so I'm not going to really bother her too much. I still well, feel like if you're able a... to gather anything before we deploy, we can always go over it just before both teams depart to make sure we're all up to date on information. I still feel like there's a tie-in, so hopefully there's some there's some help to be had. We will see. All right. Well, deployment aside, we have some time as we finalize the calculations with the help of cost to determine how we're going to deploy us all into one of those vulnerabilities and what our best options are. Does anybody have any general questions for the group while we're all still here? Nothing uh, that can't w nothing that can't wait till later. I I had one I wouldn't mind asking to the floor now that there's a couple more people around. Go for it. Um. Early, yesterday when we were talking, uh, Argith mentioned something about us um, kind of being helped along with the way we were uh, growing and getting stronger. Uh, I was wondering if any of you knowledge folk might have had a a little bit more you could share on that? Well, without invoking the God Pact, you are... We're currently under some very unique circumstances. In the past, as you may have been told previously, some of the gods have acted through chosen individuals in the mortal realm to act in their stead when they could not. The situation here is largely the same, but considering the godfall and other s extenuating circumstances, there's a bit more potential to directly influence you, trickling the most minute amount of their domains into you temporarily to enhance your abilities for the trials you're currently facing. I imagine once we all return back to the heavens, that will eventually fade away slowly, but for the time being, it seems to have a residual effect on you based on the reports we've gotten from Cornelius thus far. So we'll call it a compounding effort between your direct connection to your various deities the unique tasks that Brianna has set you all off on, as well as a very aether-rich environment to enhance your otherwise already above-average mortal abilities. Aether-rich, huh? Yes. A side effect of all of us being down here. I wonder about the gods this. radiate an immense amount of aether, and that has coalesced in the environment to an extent. Magic ah. fuels it. Magic is fueled by it most directly, but others find less obvious means to use it and augment themselves, even if they're not aware of it. Enhance strength and speed, other effects such as that. Assuming we make it back. I'd like to have a chat with you on that subject. That is fair enough. Once Cornelius is back, he should be able to open the door to our office at any time. And hopefully that pesky seal of yours will eventually be removed. We've had quite a number of interesting discoveries so far that we're quite keen to pass along. Well, on that point, who can remove this, aside from the Triumvirate? You named all of them just then. Uh, uh. Excellent. Okay, it's a, sure. It's a very strict defensive measure they put in place for very specific reasons that we are not able to meddle with, unfortunately. Sounds that one of them has already removed their seals. You don't have much hope for ethos, but... 
Things have been gaining traction here. Fence sitter as he is, Zeises can only remain out of the fray of things for so much longer before his hand is forced. I'd make a good impression. Uh huh. I've got another question. Very well. So. I'm not saying that this isn't, like, I know this is urgent, we gotta go do this right now. But I do have to say, we all kind of made a promise to Lana uh, to go get her siblings. Do you suspect that we'd still be able to get them after? Or, uh, Lana, plug your ears for a quick second. Okay. <laughs> Lana just kind of, like, folds her ears in and just kind of, like, goes, <laughs> da, da, da. Okay. Or, like, while we're gone, can we send somebody to go kidnap them? Okay, Lana, you can unplug your ears. Huh? Or, or like... You just tap Lana like, on the shoulder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most of our more capable individuals are going to be deployed already in combat scenarios, considering the risk involved in our current operation. I haven't been filled in on the matter you're discussing, though, directly. And he glances over towards Nara. Based on what we saw, Tomas, and the rates we saw at which people were completing the training and then taking the oath to transition into Silver Order Knights, I imagine we at least have a few weeks left before we have any risk to either of Lana's siblings. Only oh, a few weeks. Okay, that's... You know, that's that's more than enough time. You know, we we got we got bigger things to be doing. Well, as long as none of us slip up and get kidnapped again, we don't exactly have any emergency priorities left after this one until the demon host shows up. <laughs> so we go get our shield boy. We go get our one-armed companion. We bring them back and we go get lost siblings. Yes. Yeah, if, let's do it. If it was any other circumstance that wasn't as heavily armored, I'd recommend sending in Cedar's troop. But there is the risk of them running into Silver Order Knights directly, and as strong as Joe's or is, I don't imagine them being able to fight off an entire patrol of them single-handedly, so and besides, let's keep them in a supplementary role for now. And besides, if, if we're going to go save Jenna and Julian, I want to be there. Yeah, she doesn't really want them kidnapped. That is completely fair, dear. Well, once this matter is put behind us, then we'll refocus our efforts into that. Something to look forward to. Something to fight for. There's a lot still to fight for. Let's hope it's enough. Alright. Anybody else have any questions for the group? The good old God Brain Trust. <laughs> <sighs> Nothing mission related, no. <sighs> if you need to get it off your mind now, please do. Otherwise, we're free to discuss it once we're all back. Anything I want to discuss is behind that damn seal. So, let's get ready. Let's do this thing. Alright. I'll leave you all to make preparations. Kas, I'll be joining you shortly. And the three of them nod before each flickering out one after another. So you got to talk with three members of Koss. How interesting. Well, talk to two of them. The third one just kind of sat there behind a mask, unmoving. <laughs> All right. Does anybody else have anything they want to go over this session? Or is everybody good until we reconvene and begin Operation Rescue the Dumbasses? 
Uh, no questions. Nope. All right. Nice and simple session. We. Oh. I was like, damn, someone left fast. No. You <laughs> groovy. So, now you have a good idea on your fun little cast of allies. The Council of Dumbasses. <laughs> oh, Miko. And next week, we'll launch the operation to go rescue Cornelius and Nicandros from the city of Veru. Which I'm sure will encounter zero issues, considering all the mechanics I have planned for it. Hmm. 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 So, two weeks, yeah. Yep. Uh, next week, we're going to be skipping again, because uh, we have a conflict at that time. Um, but unless anybody has any issues, the 26th and the 5th, we will be doing sessions and hopefully trying to wrap up this arc. Woohoo! Right. Woohoo! So now, aside from Xyces, we have a good idea on the face of pretty much all the gods. Uh, Mika has suspicions. <laughs> we will see if those suspicions are founded <laughs> or more gaslighting. <laughs> yeah. They're probably it's gonna hair, be, it'll be, It's going to be more gaslighting. It's hairbrain theory it at this point. It would never be more gaslighting. Gas <laughs> I don't even know. It's just hairbrain theories. I haven't gaslighted you guys in a while. It's mostly just been me staticking things out now. That's the flavor of the month. <laughs> that's that's gaslighting Reeves, if anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's torching Reeves. It's nuts, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, Mika wants to take All a right. nap and have a nice head chat with everybody. Yeah. But yes, uh, if anybody does want to try to reach out to um, head friends in the downtime week, let me know and we can try to schedule a discussion. I do. I do. Yep. <laughs> I. Damn it! I like bullying <laughs> Reese. God damn it! <laughs> Uh, I would also like to schedule, because uh, I think we have one for, like, uh, a other cedar planned. Yes. <sighs> I think you, you mentioned a, you mentioned a cell waste chat at one point, so. Yep. You can choose to chat with either cell waste or Mika first, depending on what you want to dig into. Okay. No. I think... Also, on my short list would also be cracks. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, if you guys want a discussion with me, um, ping me directly with the list of people in priority order if you would like to talk to. Oh. Okay. And Wolf. I will be reaching out to you during this downtime week. You don't get a choice. I know who you're talking to. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> That'll be fun. We gotta give Wolf some fun new discussions to bring in when he kicks down the door to Varu. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> Wolf to get wrecked. <laughs> Sam, that's the most Tomas list I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> I what? thought you would like it. <laughs> what? Tomas, I, I got Tomas's list of priority. I feel like w one of them is anybody else and then Tomas. <laughs> no, Tomas is just the last tier, like the lowest priority. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's only got three choices, man. <laughs> I mean, Lana's technically only got one besides the one who's, like, 100% uptime. Yeah. Kevin, I need you to know something soft. Mm-hmm. If they had less time to get Lana's siblings, Tomas was 
preparing himself to ask Beck if it would require a favor to go get them. Aww. Aww. He's very big for a favor. That's gay as shit. <laughs> God. Siblings are very important, okay? They are. Tomas Reese is knows. just gonna favor the final boss out of existence. No. No, Matt, he's got bigger plans for it than that. I know. Hey, Feck! You ever build a city? <laughs> <laughs> Only when I'm bored. Hey, you bored? <laughs> All the time. I got time. a favor! <laughs> yeah. I know that was in your pocket. But we'll see if I can bully you into dropping that on something else, because you're weak and gay. <laughs> also, I feel like I need to remind the group of Tomasa's original goal in this campaign was to murder every demon in existence. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, murdering a god is not that far off. <laughs> not so much. Reese would like one nap and one juice box. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can only pick one. A nap. <laughs> yeah. I need help with my character sheet. That is fair. Well, I can it won't let me change that. her speed. Um, There's two places you can edit it, I think. Oh, do I need to change Percy's AC since he got farting? Uh, e yes, you need to give him plus one AC, and then if his de unless his dexterity is over twenty. I'm also struggling uh, with her. AC. It is not. Uh, so Sam. Your cat wearing barding would mostly be for appearance. Oh, really? Uh, she has a plus six to dexterity, dear. And the armor gives her a dex cap of five. Oh, uh, can I have my ten gold back? Yes. So unless you're trying to buy plus one barding for your cat. How much would plus one barding be? Um... 160 gold. She can have that later. <laughs> I, was, I was like, is Tomas about to be the kind of motherfucker that buys his cat plus three major resilient armor and sits in plus one leather armor the entire game? Matt, who the fuck do you think I am? I know who you are, Sam. Mika would slip her the cash, too. <laughs> they slip the cash over. Thank no, you. I was legit looking at materials for Tomas to take her bard... Maya's bar into me gave like Mika, how do we make sure Maya never dies? I got some He's ideas. He's gonna do it. I got some ideas. <laughs> He's got two crafters to talk to next week. Mm -hmm. He's gonna be like, babe, I need arrows. Mika, I need cat armor. Mika would be so invested in helping with that. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> uh... Um, make sure that you mark that your cat is trained in unarmored, by the way, Sam. Or expert, I forget oh. if they've gone up. Okay, so I don't know. That's where I can't, I can't figure out what she is. Uh, she's mature? She's, she's nimble. She's oh, on above mature. Uh, expert in unarmored defense. And now we watch the level, the AC go burr. <laughs> that is so much higher than what I had on the other one. I did all <laughs> my math wrong, Matt. <laughs> Dude, what did old Maya sheet have? Old Maya sheet had 21. It's 10 off, Matt. <laughs> Lol. Your cat's got 31 AC. Yes, and 113 HP. Same the cat AC also has 22 me. dexterity. It's the same, the same AC, same as, AC me. as me. 
<laughs> Everybody's AC cap is the same unless you wear full plate. Mm, okay. Wait, does she have an AC cap? Should it be lower? No. Oh, shit. She's at maximum theoretical AC. Flick to oh, your deck. I did have to... I did have to do a funny thing to get her HP right, because she's got zero Ancestry HP, because she has no Ancestry HP. Ah. So I gave her a modifier and named it Ancestry HP. Leo, I swear to Christ. God, watch me having calculated her fucking to hit wrong. That's why she couldn't hit shit. What's her <laughs> speed supposed to be, Sam? 35. Leo, stop crying. No. God, I'm giving your cat fleet. What's fleet? It gives them bonus to movement speed. Okay. Fuck actually okay. figuring this out. <laughs> How do I add her attacks without adding weapons? Because she doesn't have those. Um, claws? Do claws come up as a weapon? Hold on. Alright. Damn it. Hold on. I can fix this. I'm gonna beat this cat. Hey, your cat's speed is normal. Um, yeah, hold on. You're going to have to add a claw weapon, essentially. Okay. Uh, gotta be my cat. Gotta beat him to the quiet. <laughs> It was funny, every time you, like, pause for a second, he cried. Yeah. I'm like, I love you. I love him so much. <laughs> for fun backstory stuff that doesn't actually matter, you guys heard and spoke to the speaker and the historian. Speaker and the historian. Hmm. I like that. Uh, the other guy who didn't say anything was the Kabbalist. Oh, the Kabbalist? Okay. They all have their own, like, micro-domains over certain specific parts of Kosses. Oh, I like that. I, mm -hmm. it, it also makes sense, because it's just like, of course, Koss, the gun all should be like a convocation of, of a bunch of, like, university department heads. <laughs> it's like, well, what's your domain? Written history. Wow, that's fucking worthless. Wanna be friends? <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Maybe if we put our worthless shit together, we'll maybe be kind of we cool. Maybe if we all team up, we can hide in the bunker and just send one idiot out to fucking tank the gunfire for us. Oh god, he died to the gunfire, what do we do? Yeah, send the newbie out, uh-oh. Uh-oh, newbie got his arm cut off. God damn it. Well we gave, he made the stopwatch and everything. <laughs> It's like, it, it, it's like I, it's like we sent out a journalist. How this could happen? The journalist had access to everything. It was actually clever. Fuck. God damn it. I didn't think he'd look in the stopwatch. Leo is so sad. Oh. Does he say meow? Yeah. Yeah. Says lots of meow. So much meow. 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 God damn. Animal companions sit on just trained for their unarmed attacks forever. Can't get can't get too OP. Yeah. They're basically free actions, so.
Oh, you only get a large animal companion if it's savage. That's unfortunate. That's why I wanted to do savage, but it just didn't make sense. Yeah. Are you done yeah. playing? Are you done yeah. Playing yeah, all the hours of prog are probably not worth it. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> See, because the nimble just it puts her dexterity at twenty two. Whereas yep. Savage would have only put it at her her strength at I think eighteen. Uh. Sam, be sure to put the Agile tag on the claws. Okay, yeah, that's what I was looking at, because it's Agile and Finesse are her claws. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was getting down there. That's what you want, his scratch? Kid scratches. Hey! Hey. Yeah. Uh, Matt. The price tag. So I'm looking at price tags. Mm -hmm. And I'm noticing that the, the weapon potency rune for plus two is 935 gold points. And the greater striking rune for the extra damage dice is 1065. What's the price tag on that greater striking rune going to be? Because I don't think 135 yeah. gold is correct. I don't know why they're doing... Oh, I see what they tried to do. It's fu Their numbers are just adding up weird. It's a thousand to go from plus two to plus two greater striking. Okay, cool. Good to know. That's. I, I'm just trying to budget for the future here. I, 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 I had a feeling you weren't going to give that one up for a hundred gold. <laughs> yeah. You're making a second? Oh, fangs. Mm-hmm. Do you want the hat, Leo? There you go, Leo. Aww. She, she bites more often just because it's more damage. <laughs> yeah. It's good for the first attack in a round. She jumped. Yeah. It's, it depends on if I want to use the agile trait or not. He's so content. Oh. <laughs> See, Leo, if you just come to me and stop screaming at my door. <laughs> your door that's very open, isn't it? It's not open. I don't... Sam, oh, I have... Oh, your outside door. The, I forgot for The door a leading out of my house. <laughs> I forgot. I have one <laughs> inside door, and it's to my bathroom. Yeah. I just put, Sam, I just put Leo in the hat in cute critter corner. <laughs> I need to see Leo in the hat. Oh, yeah, I need to see Leo in the oh, hat. Oh, baby. He looks so grumpy and dumb. Oh, and dumb. <laughs> look at how grumpy and dumb he looks. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't even kidding. <laughs> He's perfect. <laughs> He's a beautiful, majestic creature. It's a beautiful, with, majestic fucking with a, meow box. 